Good day Tasmanian Tiger fans, Michael Moss, independent Tasmanian Tiger searcher researcher, mainland Australia only, since 1995. About five years ago, with a company in Melbourne called EnviroDNA, they created a probe, basically. To cut a long story short, it meant that people can go out and take water samples and trace Tasmanian tiger DNA by returning the, um, the water sample to the, to, the, um, to the laboratory and get it tested. And to get that happening, I had to find a Tasmanian tiger hair, which I did, and I'll um, and provide it to them and pay 3000 And they managed to extract DNA from the hair. So the end result is what I just told you, and I'll put a link to that in the um, introduction to this video. Last November, I decided after hearing that, you know, through previous correspondence last year, that the West Australian Conservation Department have their own environmental DNA library, um, laboratory, the only state or territory to have that. So I thought that I would do this. I would contact them to see if they would do the same thing I did with four of their most recent extinct mammal species in West Australia. Okay. Which were, or are, the crescent nail tail wallaby, the southern pig-footed bandicoot, the desert bandicoot, and the lesser stick nest rat. Now, the crescent nail tail wallaby, just quickly... This species was common in southwestern Australia until about 1900, but the population rapidly declined thereafter. It survived in the arid interior until the 50s, 1950s, with the last confirmed report near Warburton WA in 1964, though the last generally accepted records are from the early 1950s. Southern pig-footed bandicoot. I won't try and pronounce the scientific name. This unique uh, arid adapted bandicoot became extinct in the 1950s across its range, which included Western Australia. Desert bandicoot. This species had a wide distribution across Central Australia into Western Australia, but became extinct in 1943. Lesser stick nest rat, once found throughout West Central Australia. The last reliable record for this species was in 1933. Predation by introduced species like feral cats and foxes, along with habitat degradation from land, clearing and livestock, are considered the primary causes for these extinctions. The Christmas Island pipistrel is the most recent Australian mammal extinction over all 2009, but it was endemic to Christmas Island, not mainland Western Australia. Now, I've taken all of this from AI overview, so if this is wrong, blame it. Now, a map of West Australia is here. Look how big it is. Right, it's the whole of the east coast, basically of Australia in one. Christmas Island, okay, is up on the left, out in the middle, heading towards Indonesia or whatever, heading away from Australia. Okay, so that's where that the most recent extinct species. So I wrote to the minister, conservation minister. And this is a reply I got today, right here from the Department of. Biodiversity Conservation and Attractions Office of the Director General. Okay, their reference MIN 1640-25. Inquiries Katrina Walton, Katrina Walton at dbca.wa.gov.au. Won't leave the phone number. So there's me. Okay, so dear Mr. Moss, Environmental eDNA. I refer to your email dated 13th of November 2025 to the Minister for the Environment, Honourable Matthew Swinburne, MLC, regarding environmental DNA. The Minister has asked that I respond on his behalf. I appreciate your interest in the technology, in this technology, and your acknowledgement of the important work undertaken in this area by the Department of Biodiversity, Conservation and Attractions, DBCA. DPCA recognises the expanding role of eDNA as a complementary tool for biodiversity monitoring, threatened species management and improving ecological understanding. DBCA's research scientists continue to develop and apply these methods in collaboration with universities, museums and other external research partners. 
Regarding the mammal species historically recorded from West Australia and now listed as extinct, these classifications are based on decades of survey effort, historical records and the absence of verified detections over several decades. While it is acknowledged that undetected presence is theoretically possible for any species, the likelihood of survival of these particular mammals is considered very low. Any future claims of rediscovery would require rigorous and independent validation before changes to the conservation status could be considered. In relation to the potential development of targeted genetic assays from museum specimens, DBCA collaborates with Australian museums and research institutions where suitable material exists and where such work aligns with current conservation priorities. The feasibility of generating reliable markers from historical specimens can vary. DBCA must prioritise eDNA development that support its focus on threatened species recovery and ecological monitoring. DBCA also acknowledges the valuable contribution of citizen science to biodiversity projects and the department continues to explore opportunities for responsible community participation in programs where scientific integrity and quality assurance can be maintained. Thank you for writing to the Minister on this matter and your interest in Western Australia's biodiversity and the technologies to support its conservation. Yours sincerely, Peter Dan's Acting Director General. 9th of January 2026, they actually had the insignias, Biodiversity and Conservation Scientists, Science, another department, Botanic Gardens and Parks Authority, Parks and Wildlife Service, Perth Zoo, Rottnest Island, which is just an island off Perth, 17 Dick Perry Avenue, Kensington, WA, 6151, phone 08, 92199000 website dbca.wa.gov.au Okay, so they've decided not to do it, even though they've got their own laboratory and they admit it's possible these creatures could exist. <laughs> uh, well, what can you say, eh? And as for this nonsense about, you know, continue to explore opportunities. They're miles behind in West Australia concerning citizen science um, searches for, you know, or, or um, you know, like the uh, Murray Darling. They are light years away from the East Coast, well, at least um, the Murray Darling, right, as far as involving the public in conservation and getting out there and taking eDNA samples. And it's funny because it's a bit, you know, the irony is they, they've got their own, they're, they're ahead of the game of other states, as I said, because they've got their laboratory, but they're backward in sharing with the public. And then, yeah, continue to explore opportunities. Well, this technology has been around for at least five years and longer. They've done stuff all on that issue of getting people out there, like the East Coast, like the Murray Darling, and you're seeing it in Queensland recently as well. And, you know, people, etc., etc., the public getting out there. So, um, yeah, disappointing that they basically decided they don't rule out the existence of these four species, by the way. They said it's unlikely. And I actually, in the letter to them, I said to them, please do not use the excuse you don't have the funds, because they have the funds, they're a monopoly. It goes into wages. And this is an example of why you don't want conservation monopoly. They've got the funds, they've got the money. It's just, it says they must prioritise for threatened species. That's nonsense. That is absolute nonsense. They've just decided to do that because they don't want to spend money on, spe on the money they've got, by the way. They prefer to put it into wages of people that are time service and job for life. And this is the problem with public sector union state government monopolies. And one of the reasons I did this, folks, is just imagine if through that probe and our DNA, that Melbourne company, they process a Tasmanian tiger DNA. What do you think all these other states will do? Well, they'll do what I've just done. They'll go through their, their records of extinct species, recent extinct, and 1950s, a few of these, so that's 70 years, is it? 75? And what they would do then is create probes 
get genetic samples. I mean, they, you know, they wouldn't have the problem, by the way, that I had, because, you know, they've got their own museum, so they've got their own source of hair. I had trouble getting Tasmanian tiger hair. But this mob here with these animals, they have the state museum. So that wouldn't cost them much, stuff all. Wouldn't cost them much, they've got the laboratory, so the only thing it would cost them is the wages of their staff, which I've got to admit, as I said, it's very high for what they do, and the absolute poor results you get out of it. You know, conservation still stuck in the 20th century. So, yes, the Minister didn't want to touch this. He palmed it off to the Acting Director General. The Director General's probably on holidays, to give him fair, probably a couple of months, public servants. Acting Director General. So, environmental DNA. So I just thought I'd give you an update there. So it's possible these four creatures that I pointed out to you actually exist. They don't rule them out, as you just saw. So thank you very much.